Hey guys, we had a great question in the Real Estate Financial Modeling Bootcamp course on how to show a variable rate loan in a loan amortization schedule. And it's a very different way of modeling and it requires different modeling and different formulas in order to actually pay off the loan at the end of the term. So if you have your interest rate that is changing every month, then at the end of the loan term, at the end of the 30 years, you still need to be able to pay off the loan. So you need this ending balance to be zero. So what I'm gonna do is quickly freeze panes so that you guys can see what we're doing down here. So I'm gonna go up into view and I'm gonna click on freeze panes and I'm gonna click freeze panes right here and that's gonna allow me to keep the rows and columns visible when the rest of the worksheet scrolls. So since I've selected right over here, that's going to allow me to show you guys exactly what we're doing. So I'll click that and now we've frozen panes. So similar to our fixed rate mortgage, we have our end of year, our month, and our beginning balance. And all of these things are calculated the same as they were. However, in order to capture everything that the variable rate loan is doing, we're gonna add a column for total payment. And the total payment is going to be calculated in a very different way. So if I go up to the formula bar, if I hit F2 and go up to the formula bar, you'll see that my formula is a little bit different than a fixed rate loan. So the way that I'm calculating this is by taking the payment, so the payment function, and the rate is going to be in cell I7. So I've added this column that shows us the monthly rate, assuming the loan is variable on a monthly basis and the interest rate changes on a monthly basis as well. Now the interest rate over here that I have is an annual interest rate, so I'm assuming three and a half percent to start. And so we need to divide that by 12 in order to get our monthly interest rate. Then what changes quite a bit is the number of periods. And you'll notice that we use a new function here. We use the count function. And the count function essentially allows us to count the number of cells that Excel is highlighting. But we're using what's called a shrinking formula in this case. So what that means is as we move down the amortization table and we move further into later months throughout the loan, Excel will count a smaller number every time. Now the reason why that's important is because every time that this rate changes, the number of periods needs to be reset. And if it's not reset, then we're not going to end up paying the entire loan balance off at the end of the term. So with this, the way that we start is we start with a 360 month period, so a 30 year amortization period. And then when we move to month two, we have a 359 month amortization period, then 358, then 357, and so on. So by leaving that D7 cell dynamic and not locking that cell, it allows Excel to move that as we move down, but locking the D366, if we get out of this formula, you'll notice that D366 is all the way down here. And by locking that, as we move down this table, we're not going to be going beneath that. So that's the last value that we want. So if you look at the second month's total payment, if we hit F2 right here, now we're taking the count of D8. So again, by leaving this cell unlocked, we can bring this down and shrink the count quickly and easily. So if we go back up to our total payment for month one and we hit F2 and go up to the formula bar, we have our present value and our present value is negative D7. So it's that beginning balance for the beginning of the month. So this is another thing that's different. Instead of what we did in the fixed rate loan, which was use the initial loan amount to calculate our payment every month, with a variable rate loan, we're going to be using our beginning balance from that month. So essentially every time this interest rate changes, we need to reset our payment. And by changing our formula to do this, we create a formula that ends up paying off the loan at the end of the term. So the way that everything else is calculated is the principal payment is essentially just calculated by taking the total payment minus the interest payment. And then that interest payment is going to be the interest rate for that specific month divided by 12 times the beginning balance. So that's no different from the fixed rate loan. So then we have our ending balance. Again, it's just the beginning balance minus the principal payment. And if we go all the way down, so hit control down, you'll see that we have a zero dollar 
ending balance, and everything is paid off at the end of the term. So I hope that was helpful to see the variable rate loan amortization schedule in action, and I'll see you in the next video.